Okay, this is the most concise uh, set of installation steps I can come up with to install all the prerequisites to have LotRo install cleanly and without any trouble. This is a virtual machine running Windows 10 build 1703. It's pristine. Uh, we've just installed Google Chrome and Steam on it. And here we go. We're going to adjust the sleep settings. As you can see, we go to the start orb, the gear icon, the system area, and power and sleep. We're going to set the screen sleep to never. And because this is a virtual machine, we do not have the actual PC sleep area uh, that would actually put the computer to sleep. But you would set that to never as well, just so the computer doesn't fall asleep during any long downloads. So the next step is to see if you have the .NET 3.5 framework installed. So we're going back to the gear and apps and to the program and features on the right. Now notice, if it's not showing, you just drag the window out to the right a little further and it should show up there. So programs and features. And over here we go to, on the left, turn Windows features on or off. As you'll note, it, the .NET Framework 3.5 is not installed, so we check it and we click OK. You don't need to worry about those two lower blank checkboxes. Just the main one. It's going to download some files. We're going to speed this up. And done. So we can click Close. Alright, and then the next thing we're going to do is download and install the uh, DirectX web installer. So this installs the DirectX runtimes. You have to web browse for this, which is why I pre-installed Chrome. Now, here's a thread on the LotRo forums that I wrote. Um, and if you don't want to go Googling for stuff, I actually have links to, to the uh, DirectX web installer there. And further down, there's uh, other prerequisites. Links to the Microsoft pages to download those as well. But if you don't have that thread handy, here's what you Google. You just type in DirectX, one word, web installer. And as you can see here, the top one is at Microsoft.com. That's the important part right there. It has to be right there near the HTTPS. You don't want to mess with these down below. Those are all third-party, non-Microsoft sites. So we go there, and we come down to the little orange download button and we uncheck this sneaky checkbox. We do not want that foisted upon us. And we say no thanks and continue. And it does not take long to download because it's really just an, a stub. So we open in folder or you can navigate to wherever you downloaded it. We run it. We click yes. Click I accept. And we uncheck this box. Uh, we do again it's trying to sneak in the bing bar on you there so we click next and we'll speed this up I'm sure here click next again and zoom uh, once that's all finished our next step is to check on the Visual C++ redistributables now this is really crucial if you are going to install from Steam, which is actually the one that I demonstrate in this video. Um, but as you can see, we're going back to the gear icon and programs and uh, apps and programs and features, and we're looking in here. And we do not see any Visual C++ listed there. So we're going to have to go find it and install it. So we're going to type in Microsoft Visual C++ and we're going to start with 2005. Now as you can see here, I must not have reverted this virtual machine back before I was rehearsing. Uh, so we're going to click the 2005 there. Uh, and with that search, the top one will again take you to the Microsoft website. But don't always trust that. It doesn't always... <laughs> make sure that the Microsoft.com domain is the one right there after HTTPS. Anyways, that downloads. Show in folder. VC Redist, double click it, say yes, say yes again, that is now installed. And now we need both the 2005 one and the 2010 one. So we're now going to type in Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 redistributable. Now you might have to type in more of it than that uh, before it starts showing you what you want. 
Uh, I should point out we're only getting the x86 or 32-bit versions of these, not the x64. Lot Row doesn't care about the x64 ones. So we click download again. It is actually going to download the same file name. Thank you, Microsoft. They're uh, <laughs> they're named the same. So as you can see, it puts the little one there because it's a, the same name but a different download. So we find that one with the little one there, and we run it, and we say yes. And this one's a little more involved. You actually actually have to agree to that and click install. And we click finish. And now the Steam installer should progress and then actually get to the point where it can uh, install other uh, Visual C++ redistributables. It actually will patch the ones we just installed. Uh, but unfortunately, it would, without doing what we just did, if you don't have any Visual C++ in there, it would uh, it would get into a broken state and just be stuck there. So as you can see, we've got both installed now. We can close this, and we are going to initiate the Lotro install, and we're going to do it through Steam. Um, it's not the one I prefer. I really do prefer the um, the standalone one from SSG, but since this one tends to be more problematic, it seemed like the one I should demonstrate. So here we go scroll down in Steam and click play now don't worry we're gonna speed this up hopefully get you well get this video done in 20 minutes or so so this is gonna speed this up and we click finish and as you can see down there it's downloading the 20 or so gigabytes of the rest of the game so let's uh, Hit warp speed here. You might notice the Lord of the Rings Online icon on the left is blank. I will uh, fix that later. Um, that's into yet another glitch with the Steam installer. All right, so uh, that's downloaded it. It's now doing nothing, so we click the play button. We could have also double clicked the shortcut it created click yes now here's where it would crash before it would go to the uh, it would install the dotnet framework it would prompt you and it would do that and then it would just stop so without the Microsoft Visual C++ runtimes that we installed prior um, it it couldn't progress and it would just crash silently back to the desktop and you'd be stuck in that loop so as you can see here it's able to progress and it's installing something called M who knows what that is and here we are. It says, do you want to download the six gigabytes? I always say yes to this. I'm pretty sure it downloads it regardless of how you answer, but I always say yes. You can always turn that off. So we, of course, read that in its entirety and click I agree. And this is now installing a Akamai. So it's interesting that the Steam installer doesn't even bypass the need for a Akamai. Uh, and then we click allow access for a Akamai and it will hopefully fire up here and begin to download. Here we go. Let's speed this up a little bit. And there you can see it is now able to further install Visual C++ runtimes and it actually patches the, the ones we installed, which is nice. Uh, it restarts and download screens. and checks one more time for those visual c++ redistributables and then we're going to start downloading quite a lot of patch files 91 patch files so we'll speed this up and when it's done with those it restarts itself comes up and i think it's going to download another 180 patch files or so Yep, 189 patch files. So let's accelerate this a little bit. And here we go. We've got our logon prompt. It is fully installed, and it should work. I'm going to close the launcher here and just relaunch it. And 
I'm not going to accelerate all this because we just want to show the final product working as it should. So here's my little freebie account. Let's hope I get the password right on the first try. There we go. Scroll down to Landerval and play. Read in its entirety. I agree. Read again. I agree. Now, once again, this is in a virtual machine, so uh, be gentle. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, uh, it works for testing and demonstration purposes, but uh, you'll see when we get into the actual character selection screen, it's, it's, like it's all in the shade. But it works. Yeah. See how he's standing in the dark there? That's just a, a glitch with running it in a virtual machine. So we exit out. And this little firewall thing appears. We click allow, so that won't come up in the future. Now, let's go ahead and click or fix this icon over here. We right click it and choose properties. See that change icon button there? We can click that. And we go and we find the raw lot row fire files under the C drive, program files, x86, Steam. Scroll down to Steam apps, common, Lord of the Rings online. And there's an icon.ico file. That's the icon we are used to. And there we go. You now got your pretty lot row icon. So now that we've logged in completely, we know that no no further downloads are needed. And because a comma does not do anything but handle the initial install of the client, we can and should uninstall it. So we're going to the gear, then to apps, then to uh, down to a comma, and we're choosing uninstall saying yes and uninstall there we go and a little confirmation thing will pop up here there we go click OK all right now now comma is uninstalled and we're just looking over here uh, to see now what the final product is. It's a little strange to me that s the Steam installer actually installs two little versions of that Lord of the Rings online. Um, I'm sure one is kind of a Steam stub and the other, I shouldn't say I'm sure, but one is probably a little Steam stub and the other one is actually what gets installed kind of as though it were the standalone installer from SSG. So the final thing to do here is to modify the Windows update settings. So we go to the gear icon, and we go to update and security, and down under, under advanced options, we're going to check the box that says give me updates for other Microsoft products when I update Windows. Um, this uh, is going to make it so that all those Visual C++ runtimes that you have are actually checked and updated as necessary. Uh, in this particular case, because we use the Steam installer, the Steam installer, <laughs> it's much more glitchy, but it does have one benefit in that it seems to have uh, a patch that that it installs for the uh, Visual C++ runtimes. The standalone installer from SSG actually requires you to... Uh, uh, actually installs older versions of the Visual C++ runtimes, and then this Windows update would go and patch them. Uh, that's not to say that the Steam installer... As you, as I mentioned, the Steam installer has even bigger problems, though. Um, if you have no Visual C++ runtimes installed, it it crashes silently and, and can't even get to the point where it would install or patch vis Visual C++. So, anyways, we're this is just always a checkbox you should have checked in Windows Update. Uh, especially now, after we've installed Lotro. And... Uh, and these Visual C++ runtimes will be on your computer for sure. So you see here it's uh, downloading and installing the cumulative update for Windows 10. And uh, that's actually because we installed the .NET framework. The .NET framework is part of, considered part of Windows, and once we installed it, that triggered it to go back and say, oh, well, then we better go get the newest update to Windows as well, just to make sure that those .NET binaries are using the most up-to-date and secure. So 
All right, I think this is going to really wrap it up. There's nothing really exciting from here. This is going to download and install. It actually won't even prompt for a restart. And as you saw, uh, LotRo is running. We had no problems because we installed those prerequisites before it could run into trouble. Uh, thanks for watching, and I think we will fade out from here.